I'm Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm here with Marcus Luttrell, and you are the author of the book Lone Survivor, and we're also here talking about the boot campaign. First and foremost, um, your story is really pretty incredible, and I know it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long story, but in a nutshell, if you could let our viewers know what this story is about. Sum it up, huh? Uh, all right, let me crunch a week into about two thirty seconds. Uh, basically, it was an uh, operation in Afghanistan where we were going after um, a particular individual, and it was a uh, sniper overwatch reconnaissance kind of capture kill thing. Uh, recon team consisted of four men, went out, um, got compromised, got overrun, and then it kind of goes bad from there. Actually, you know, I lost three of my teammates on the ground. Then we had another um, QR, a quick reactionary force, uh, like a, a rescue squadron, come in to try and help us out. Um, when they went to land, um, Taliban shot an RPG into the back of a blue ass guy and killed 16 more of my teammates. So 20 of us went in. You know, I, I guess I was, you know, I was the one that came out. Um, I actually made it out. Um, a week later, actually July 4th is when I got out of there, but I actually got rescued by a village. The way, the way it plays out is absolutely crazy because from the mountain where, the, where we were engaged and then from where I wound up was, um, was in God's hands, I guess you could say, because I, I, I don't know how I made it. I don't even pretend to understand how I made it out of there, but I did. So got out of there in the hospital for a while and then, you know, stories were jamming around about how, what went down and this, that, and the other, and most of it was wrong. And, you know, we were taking some black guys and this, that, and the other, and we just, the Navy came to the decision, we're like, hey, we're going to kind of let this one go and see what, you know, put it out there and tell the story. So that's that's how it came about. You know, it's basically a debrief of what went down on the mountain. And, I, and it's a it's kind of a, a crunched version of it. You know, obviously I was out there for a week, a lot of happened. There's no way you could put it in one book. But so that's what it is. It's a It's kind of a short debrief of what went down out there. And from, from what I understand, it, it involves you working with people who turned on you and you thought we're, we're going to you know be able to help you out and so there you are then it caught up in the middle of, of the Taliban and, and everything in Afghanistan and I just I can't, I can't imagine you know, it was, like I said it was crazy because it, I went from you know being a hunter to being hunted so to speak and then um, you're right I mean I got thrown into that world I was, I was alone you know and and I was there for a while so I was living in an Afghan village and they were the Taliban and Al-Qaeda you know they, they surrounded the village and were trying to kill me every 15 minutes seemed like and then you had this village who didn't know me anything you know what I mean and I, I to this day it still baffles me why they saved my life they didn't because they're still persecuted to this day for what they did for me they didn't have to step up you know I couldn't walk outside right now if I was shot in the belly no one would take me in their house I crawled into that village being chased by Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and they were like, get in here, we'll take care of you. And that blows me away. I don't want to necessarily get too political here, but do you think the war in Afghanistan and the you know the war on terrorism is winnable? Well, I wouldn't be much of a soldier if I said we were going to lose. Yeah. So absolutely, yes. It just seems that it's such a elusive you know idea because at any day you could breed more do you know what I mean and that's why it always seems like an unattainable thing even now that 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 uh, Osama bin Laden is gone it, it you feel like okay we've cut off the head and this is great and I just wonder how having been there you see the the the, the stat the progress of it and, and how attainable it is and how long that might take that's a conversation that probably last about it you know that's that's a that's a tough one. I don't really get into into much of that. I you know like I, uh, you're right. I understand where everyone is, point of view on that. It's like hey, what do you you know? We took out the head of the snake. Well, there's multiple heads, and it's just like hey, it doesn't seem like we're getting any ground, we're gaining any ground or anything like that. Well, I mean you can't think like that. The minute you start thinking like that, you're kind of you, why even go out there? You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta have the you gotta go out there with the mentality of like all right, I'm gonna get this done, and I gotta I gotta get it done right. And no matter how long it takes or how hard I have to fight, I, I gotta do it because we've committed. You know what I mean? You don't want, why don't you want to start something and not finish it? Because then that makes you weaker. And if you're fighting an enemy, they know that. So you can't. And I, you know, I understand. I got family back home. We're just like, hey, you know, what, what's going on here? You know, this is, I'm just like, man, you know, that's war, man. War is hell. You know what I mean? You can't put a timeline on it. Well, so. well, no, I know, and please, please don't, please don't interpret it that as me saying that you shouldn't be. You know what I mean? It, it really is that. It's, it's when can you guys come home? Really is what it is. Well, you, you got to think. That's the thing we think, like, hey, I'm ready to go home, you know I mean? That's, we want to win so we can come home. You know, I, it's like, I understand, and it's funny because you see all these people protesting, we're bringing the troops home, you know, hey, we want to come home too. 
You know, it's not like I want to go hang out over there, buy some property or something like that. But uh, that's not how that, that goes down. Uh, yeah, you know, I was like, it's land's cheap over here. No, that's not it. But I, I promised I'd do this. You know what I mean? I put, I, I said I would. I can't. Well, how? What, what good would I be to anybody if I, if I was like, no, nah, I'm done. This is stupid. I can't. I can't do that. How how difficult has it been? You know, even just talking with Brian Stan about about your situation and about your story. You know, he said what you went through is something that most people would pretty much be institutionalized for. When he's talking about survivors' guilt, you being the, the last remaining soldier. How long did it take you to be able to be comfortable with being stateside again? And 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 just sort of how do you even process? You said already that it takes you every day. You still think about it, but how how, how does that process unfold? Well, I you know I was in the hospital for a while, and then I I, I went back to my team. I can I surrounded myself with my teammates, guys who have been through similar situations like I had, and then I went back over. And and you know being around that that group of guys, and they don't let you. You can't be weak. You know they're not gonna let you suffer. You know they're the guys like you need to get up. What are you doing? Put, suck it up, you know. So when you're around something like that, it's kind of like if you're around a bunch of people saying, you know, you're probably jacked up, you're probably sick, you need to take these drugs. You know, it's like, well, maybe I am sick. You know, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not sick. You know, I mean, I signed up for that. I, you know, I wasn't a kid who went in to get a college education. So that's not me. I, I went to college. You know, I went. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and they trained me for that. So, you know, seeing my my buddies die and everything. I mean, that's that's hard, man. You know, but death is part of life, and I had it. If I stop doing my job because of something like that, then you know a firefighter doesn't stop going being a fireman after one fire, you know, or something like that. That's, that's kind of the way I, I I looked at it, you know, and I, you know I, my biggest push was I have a twin brother, you know, and he, he you know he he's just like you need to get back in the game, so I can't show any weakness around him or, or and vice versa. So uh, you know it's tough, you know. I mean I'm not gonna say that uh, I don't have stress. Hell, every day people have stress every day. Mine was just a little excessive, but I have broad shoulders. You know I could carry the I could carry the load. I think, and you know God built me that way, and I I hold that pretty tight to the hip. So that's the way I look at it. And then the biggest thing I do is I always. I keep I stay around my brother I stay around my teammates you know I'm I'm out here but I I have you know Brian's here so he's been through you know there's no telling what that guy's been through you know I mean so it's it's and I don't have to talk to him about it. I can just look at him you know and, and understand it and if you know later on we sit around we start talking about oh hey you remember you know I was at the same spot he was at the other well then that's good because I can look at him and when he's looking back at me and then we're talking telling stories you know he doesn't have that look like he doesn't understand what I'm saying. And that's kind of, I think that's what really gets to people the most. Like if, if someone asks them a question and they start telling a story and you're, and you're like, oh, it's, that's, you know, that sounded bad, you know, and you're like, you know, I mean, you don't know what bad is, man. You know what I mean? So, but, and it's not to alienate anybody or push anybody away, but that's just the way it is. You know, it's just kind of, that's the way it is. I mean, it's, you don't want it to be like that, but it is. And that's what makes it tolerable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I fully admit I have absolutely no idea. And, you know. Can't imagine, truly can't imagine what you guys have been through. Well, we don't want you to. You know what I mean? That, that's kind of the biggest thing is like, and with the media all spun up about what's been going on, this, that, and the other, and everybody wants to know everything, and this, that, and the other. Well, I was like, you didn't want to know the day before. I was like, if you want to know so bad, grab a rifle and come help. But other than that, what do you really care? Because in three months, you're not going to. And if you put out everything that we do on the market, then the bad guys are going to know. And they're not going to, in three months, they're still going to care. So you're basically killing us. You're gonna you're gonna walk us into something that we can't get into. People don't think about that though. They just want to. They all right. We got to get this story. You know, this that and the other. And we're like, hey, look, man, you guys really didn't care about us beforehand. Why don't you just leave us alone? And uh, that, that, and other than that, if you if you're out, live live your life, man. Wake up every morning, and ki you know, kiss your kids, kiss your husband, and go to work and have a good time. And th we got it. You know what I mean? We got it. it so don't worry about it. Well, thank you for that. I do wonder how the MMA community has responded to you. Know, Brian, obviously, very talented fighter. And I wonder, you just talked about being able to look somebody in the eye and know they, they, they share your story. Obviously, what they do is different, but they are fighters, they are soldiers, they are warriors in a way. And I'm curious the bonds you feel with, with MMA fighters. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I... I I'm still, and, and, you know, all those guys too. What they, what they do, you know. I mean, they, we, we, we are similar. You know, you treat your body like a machine. You, you have an, an ultimate goal, and that's, that's to win. Period. You know, win by any means necessary, uh, and, and become the best and stay the best. And you, you live that lifestyle, and, and you know, we have something in common with them. 
I, absolutely, but I'm not a professional fighter. I don't even pretend to be one. You know, I, I have so much respect for those guys and what they do. And when they get in the ring and, 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 you know, they're staring each other down, I'm right there with them. You know, I mean, you could probably say that about any military guy. When we're watching these guys, we're just like, oh, yeah, come on. You know, it's like, all right, let's go out and do some of our, you know what I mean? It's just like we get so fired up about them. And it, they really don't, I mean, they're always like, thank you guys for doing this, that, and the other. But in, in all actuality, we, you know, we like to thank them because you don't understand. Like when we're over there in the middle of nowhere and you kind of wander in somewhere like to a, a base and there's a TV on the wall and these guys are, you know, up doing what they're doing, man. It's like they just bring us home, you know what I mean? It's just like you just took my mind off of everything. All that crap I just shoveled back, you know, out there and dealing with all that mess. I was just like, I can just sit here and watch you guys and respect what you do and, and how hard you fight to to win and, and understand that because I'm out here doing the same thing. But yet, all right, I'm back home, you know. I'm not, the burden's not on me now. It's it's on them. You know, they're, they're stepping up. And, and uh, it, it's a, it's different, but it's all, it's a, it's a relative, you know what I mean, in, in anything. So, yeah, I, you know, I'd say the biggest proponent of USC fans is, is the military you know what I mean we, we you know it's it's a big deal so and Brian being you know what, what do you say about that guy I mean he's he's out there walking the line you know getting just like we said earlier but you know blasted up the guys are dying you know and then he comes back over here and it's, he didn't get enough you know what I mean the guy's he's got a fire burn in his gut that that a well, flame probably you know and it's just like I'm gonna go in here and and I don't have to be a fighter but I just like to punch people in the face you know and that's what he tells me I'm like yeah, I, you know he's like all right, man. You know that's the way people are made. People wake up every morning. I was I was made to be a doctor. I was made to be a lawyer. I was made to be I'm made to be a fighter. You know, so. Well, our show is MMA Heat, and it stands for Heart, Endurance, Aggression, and Technique. And you, Marcus, certainly have shown so much of those four characteristics, and uh, and we just really appreciate it. And thank you for everything you've done. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm Marcus Latrell, and you're watching MMA Heat.